Hi, and welcome to Spotlight, Contemporary Art with Barbara and Shara. And today we're going to visit the Gagosian Gallery, one of the most famous galleries in Rome, and the exhibition of Caterina Grosse. Hey Shara, I'm so happy to be here this afternoon with you and in this nice neighborhood, it's like you're really in the center of Rome. You can see it, um, the Campo Rione, Campo Marzo. So we are really in the historical center of Rome in a very important street uh, that actually connects with uh, the Spanish uh, steps with the Trevi fountain over there. And in this street that is called the Via Francesco Crispi, um, and the street makes a reference to one of these statesmen, uh, the architects of the unification of Italy in the 19th century. Uh, and actually the street is very known for two uh, important places. You already mentioned the Gogosian Gallery, but also in front of us uh, we see the Galleria d'Arte Moderna di Roma Capitale. It's actually in the monastery uh, part of that church that is next door and uh, it holds the mo modern art of Rome and Italy, let's say, and it's run by the Comune di Roma. So it's a municipal um, museum of modern arts. Barbara, it's so exciting to see this show together with you. Um, every time I come into Gagosian Gallery, I think about the first exhibition that they did. I was in Rome. Um, I didn't bring my students to the opening, but they had closed off the street, and only a gallery of this caliber can have uh, so many people coming to the opening that they close off the street. And this was in 2007. Um, and ever since then, it's been so exciting for Rome to have Gagosian here because we see exhibitions of artists that are extraordinary artists, um, museum quality work that we wouldn't ordinarily see in all the museums that we visit. We have great museums, but you know. So that's one of the fantastic, I think, uh, aspects of Gagosian Gallery in Rome. Sarah, thank you so much for uh, bringing me to the Gogosian today. Obviously, I've been in the Gogosian here in Rome uh, before, but also to the other galleries in Paris and New York. And it's always a joy to be in, in, in the Gogosian galleries. And um, yeah, I actually looked a little bit at the work of uh, Katarina Grosso also online. Um, I mean, she's just one explosion of colors. Um, and uh, I was also interested to see a little bit more about her biography that she is uh, working in Berlin, but also in New Zealand. And um, yeah, and obviously that she's choosing her materials um, very wisely. I mean, it's a lot of colors as we, are, we can see, but I'm very happy to also discover her work here on paper um, with watercolors and acrylic paints. Uh, whereas she's made me most known for her site-specific uh, works now. Yeah, in fact, Barbara, that's all very perceptive. Um, and it's extraordinary, the space to walk in and, you know, these, these very vibrant pieces. Um, and of course, these are brand new works, which is so exciting for the public to see. And she's made them in her new studio in New Zealand, mm -hmm. where she's thinking about the landscape and you know she has these amazing views of the water it's in western New Zealand so very remote mm. and she puts these pieces on the floor they're watercolors standard watercolors but she has this very interesting technique of applying water and letting the water so the clarity of the water create sort of the matrix onto which then she you know mixes pigments so we get more watery pigments or denser areas um, so, you know, it's not just looking at abstraction, but it's really looking carefully at this very intelligent, as you said, this very intelligent artist and how she thinks. I'm amazed, Shara. I mean, the, you would think when you apply color on top of another color and a third color, fourth color, that you would get this brown mix of colors. I mean, you know, um, but that's, that doesn't happen in her work. And I think that's because she is applying the color in such a wise and intelligent way. There is a play of chemistry going on between the colors. Some pop 
pop up. Um, others actually start to fade. Um, there is mix, but there is also like um, colors opposing each other. And I think if we look closer, we might actually see how she lets these pigments uh, interact with each other. Sometimes they, you know, they interact and they become a new color. Like here in this area, you know, this, this, the blue and the yellow create that beautiful green line. But then others uh, are just remaining the color as she applied it on the canvas, which is fantastic. And I think that is also a little bit what the title of an exhibition is about. No, it's uh, Saperatrix. Um, referring also some, to some theory I read about um, a German uh, philosopher and mathematician. And I, obviously you think about the matrix, which is the culmination of something new coming out of, uh, of, of some elements, where this is then the separation, or at least the blend of separating and, and, and making something new out of the matrix. So I, I really love that. No, in fact, Barbara, even, you know, even when she's working with fewer colors, what you're saying is so, you know, is so pertinent, um, the overlapping and the blending. And of course, here you get a very interesting uh, view of, of her technique, um, two colors, if you wish, that then form maybe a third color. But these very large paintings, which recall the site-specific pieces that she does, usually in situ, indoors or outdoors, where she covers vast spaces um, so she's integrating, right, nature into the architecture and so on. And the process here is, is a little bit different. In those pieces, she uses spray paint and she gets on a crane and she, you know, she needs to be high up above the ground. Here, she puts the paintings on the ground, literally horizontally, and applies the paint uh, where more, where less, uh, more dense, uh, more fluid, and then lifts the paintings and so it becomes a, a, a kind of almost a spontaneous act, parts of it. She controls it, but we have this idea of chaos and order, which I think comes into play also in her, in her title. Even pink <laughs> works well. <laughs> Clara, this painting is very, very interesting because I see different dynamics than I've seen in the other paintings. So it makes me think about what I would see if I looked through a microscope. You know, it's like what kind of organisms are working together and how they live. And it's almost this painting comes to life. Uh, but there is this like dynamic also from almost the volcano, you know, the, the fire that is getting out of the volcano, the splashes of fire. Um, so this one is, is to me very, very dynamic and very organic, very natural. And then obviously that, that pink at the end is as though, you know, a color that we, we don't see so often <laughs> in, on earth. And that, that is like, you know, that human splash of, of um, multitude and, and diversity almost like at the end of this culmination. I, I, this is a very dynamic and a very active uh, piece. I, I really like this one here. Yeah, uh, Shara, thank you so much for, uh, you know, showing me this beautiful place, obviously. I'm always happy to be here, but um, especially to see Katrina Gross's work. Um, I know she's showing also in other places in the world uh, right now. So really an important name uh, to, to, rem uh, to remember. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see another show here in the gallery. <laughs> I might add that the Maxi Museum acquired very recently one of her pieces. Oh, fantastic. So in Rome, we at our museum have a Caterina Grossa work, a recent Caterina Grossa work. <laughs>